Okay. All right. Well, y'all, thank you for coming. Uh, Peggy and I welcome everyone to the beautiful Governor's Mansion's grounds here in South Carolina. For all the places I've been, this is a this is the prettiest prettiest spot of all the Governor's Mansions. Some don't don't have mansions, but we do. It's historic and. What we're doing today is historic as well. This is Child Abuse Prevention Month, and we will have several people address these subjects, but I'd like to say that this is something that uh, Peggy and I have been interested in and attempting to do something about for a long time. And this Child Abuse Prevention Month will raise awareness of people to something bad that is going on in South Carolina, and that's child abuse. It goes on everywhere. And we need to have a, a full assault of education, information, collaboration, cooperation, sympathy, and understanding in order to eradicate this scourge in South Carolina, which again exists all over America. But I think we can do things better here in South Carolina than they can in other places because we, we have big hearts and we all know each other and can work together very well. But child abuse is a has an impact on a child, it will last a whole lifetime, and then the generations following that child, because how you grow up is the way you think the whole world works. And so that's what you pass on to your children and on to theirs. So there are a lot of ways to get involved to eliminate child abuse in South Carolina, which is our ultimate goal. And we hope that all will be involved and find a way that they can take a stand and make a difference. One thing we know is when we have people with good jobs, with careers, they're earning money, that are informed, they're educated, they stay away from drugs, stay away from crime, and things get better. So that is our ultimate goal is to make this place we love and call South Carolina the best place in the whole world to live, work, and raise, raise children, and raise, raise a family. So this is a proclamation State of South Carolina, Governor's Proclamation, whereas South Carolina's future prosperity and quality of life depend on the healthy development of the 1.1 million children residing in the diverse communities across our state, and whereas preventing child abuse and neglect must be a priority that requires individuals, families, child-serving organizations, schools, faith-based groups, businesses, government agencies, and civic leaders to support the physical, emotional, social, and educational well-being of all children. And whereas child abuse is a serious public health issue with wide-ranging societal consequences, as data show the link between the abuse and neglect of children and a wide range of costly medical, emotional, psychological, and behavioral issues into adulthood. And whereas parents and caregivers who have a support system of family and friends know where to find public resources and understand how to remain resilient in challenging times are best equipped to provide safe, nurturing environments for their children. And whereas statewide and community prevention programs serve as proven and effective ways to reduce child abuse and neglect, no matter the geographic region, race, ethnicity, or economic status. And whereas, in fiscal year 2018, there were 20,198 children in founded investigations of child maltreatment in South Carolina. Now, therefore, I, Henry McMaster, governor of the great state of South Carolina, do hereby proclaim April 2019 as Child Abuse Prevention Month throughout the state and encourage all South Carolinians to dedicate themselves to protecting the quality of life for every child. It's signed by me, your proud, happy governor of South Carolina. And now I'll ask the Lieutenant Governor, Pamela Evett, to come forward. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here um, to stand in solidarity, solidarity to this important issue, prevention of child abuse. Uh, our children are our biggest blessing. They're our greatest asset. They are the future of not only of our state, but of our nation. And we want to make sure that we protect this important treasure. Uh, the governor and I believe 
that a child should never be threatened, abused, or victimized. Last week while in D.C., I had the pleasure of sitting and talking to Jerry Milner. He's the Associate Commissioner uh, and the Ch of the Children's Bureau and the Acting Director of the Administration of Children, Youth, and Families. And we talked to great length about prevention, because prevention education is the key to helping stop child abuse. The one key thing I took away um, that I want everybody to take away is that this is something that's happening in our churches, in our families, and in our neighborhoods. It's not something we can push off. So we need to be educated. We need to catch families when they're vulnerable and they're at risk before they enter um, our state systems. We need to place more emphasis on education. We need to support strong families. We want to thank organizations like Children's Trust that are doing great work here in South Carolina. I'm excited about our new director of DSS and the exciting things that he's going to bring to South Carolina to help stop child abuse and neglect. I know that if we continue collaborating, cooperating, and educating, we can definitely make big impacts here in our state of South Carolina. Right now, I'd like to uh, I'd like to welcome Senator Katrina Sheely to the podium. Senator Sheely has worked tirelessly to protect children here in South Carolina. Thank you. Thank you, Governor, and thank you, Lieutenant Governor and First Lady. Thank you all for this opportunity. One of the blessings of childhood is innocence. Children rely on their families to care for them, protect them, and guide them through their early lives. Our children come into life without bias, without prejudice, and without knowledge of the wider world they live in. Unfortunately, many children also come into life without a safe place to sleep, without a secure source of food, or without families or with families who need help develop, developing positive habits. Children need loving, caring, and healthy homes to grow into adulthood and become good parents themselves. The cycle of poverty and unhealthy habits, food and jobs, and insecurity also leads to child abuse. Alleviating these social ills can help alleviate the scourge of child abuse. But as we all know too well, it takes work, lots of work, to break the cycle of abuse. Fortunately, today we have better research than ever to help us target the behaviors that lead to trauma and abuse. We finally had the ability to help families in need so that children never have to experience child abuse. If we invest more in prevention efforts, we will save money in the long run. Yes, more importantly, we can save lives. Each of you here today has an important voice in this effort. As the General Assembly works on the budget this session, reach out to your senators and representatives and tell them that child abuse prevention is an investment that pays off. This year, the Senate has passed several pieces of legislation aimed at addressing the plague of child abuse. We sent to the House two bills that will help researchers like Children's Trust better evaluate prevention programs. Another that the Senate has passed will eliminate child marriages under 16. And one of the most important pieces of legislation we passed all year will expand services and resources to kinship care families who have so long cared for ch their children with little or no help at all. While we have been busy this season, there is still so much yet to be done. This year alone, dozens of babies will still die in their cribs because of unsafe sleep. Every month, families are living paycheck to paycheck and can't afford basic needs for their children. This week, nearly 50 young people will become regular smokers, and this morning, children went to school with a, without a healthy breakfast, and tonight, they will go to bed hungry. But I'm pleased to say that the governor has appointed an outstanding candidate to serve as director of the Department of Social Services. Michael Leach comes to us from Tennessee with a wealth of experience and if confirmed by the Senate, will hit the ground running in an effort to serve children and their families. We also expect an announcement from the governor very soon for our new state child advocate. 
This person will have a trained set of eyes on all of the state's child serving agencies to help better coordinate services and ensure more accountability for our children. There is no better time than now to make the changes and investments necessary for our future. Our children are our future. And if we don't give them every opportunity possible to succeed, then we're not doing everything we can to create a better tomorrow. The innocence of a child should be matched with our resolve to protect that innocence by preventing abuse, neglect, and trauma from being a part of our lives and our vocabularies. Let's work together today and every day to stamp out abuse for a better future for our children so that they no longer know hunger or insecurity, but are embraced with love and safety and opportunity. Thank you for the opportunity to speak with you today. And now, Beth Bernstein, um, the representative Beth Bernstein from the House will speak with you. Good morning. Thank you. It's been um, a pleasure to be here, and I thank the governor for inviting me and also to be here because of Child Abuse Prevention Month in recognition of that. We know that strong and thriving families are the most successful protection for children, and we honor those who are working together in communities to stop abuse and neglect before it occurs. I'm proud to not only serve in the South Carolina House of Representatives for District 78, but I was also and have been selected to serve on the Joint Citizens and Legislative Committee on Children, where we focus on these issues. And I serve with Senator Katrina, Katrina Sheely. And this committee is um, comprised of legislators, community members, citizens, agency heads and we collaborate together for that effort for the sole purpose of preventing child abuse and neglect. As you know the Children's Committee is a multidisciplinary group which includes legislators, agency heads and citizens appointees and we are specifically charged by law with identifying the most pressing needs of children. And we're also charged with making sound, financially prudent decision to best use our state's limited resources. And we know that children and families need support in times of crisis. When parents have the knowledge, skills, and resources they need to care for their children, child abuse and neglect is prevented. And I think that is significant and is worth repeating. When they have the knowledge, skills, and resources, child abuse and neglect is prevented. These positive conditions, protective factors, can serve to prevent children's exposure to traumatic events and also help them recover from trauma if it does occur. In 2018, the Children's Committee identified building resilience in families and children as a key strategy to protect physical and mental health and well-being. And we know that there are a number of promising programs in our state with DSS, Children's Trust, the Department of Mental Health, and other entities to help families build resilience and prevent exposure to adverse child experiences, which is commonly referred to as ACEs. And I think you'll start to hear that term more commonly now. And the Children's Committee commends those efforts and stands as a partner to promote and build on those best practices for children. And you are a part of the solution already. The children of South Carolina have vast needs and the state has limited resources. We must make wise, smart decisions. I'm dedicated to working with you and all of our community partners to make services for our children even better and to keep working to eliminate child abuse in South Carolina. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you this morning. I think everybody who's standing here today is part of the solution of this problem already and coming together as parents, communities, service providers, advocates, all with the role to play to strengthen families and prevent child abuse and neglect. And it's my pleasure to be able to introduce the executive director of the Children's Trust, Sue Williams, who will also say a few words. Thank you. Thank you, Representative.
Good, after, good morning. I'm Sue Williams, the CEO of Children's Trust of South Carolina, the nonprofit established by our state to strengthen families and lead communities in preventing child abuse and neglect. First, I want to thank Governor McMaster and the First Lady for opening the mansion for us today. We sincerely appreciate your support and leadership in helping us raise awareness about the importance of prevention. You have consistently made the case for protecting and supporting children throughout your time as public servants, and it clearly remains a leading personal and policy priority for your governorship. I also thank Lieutenant Governor Pamela Abbott. During her short time in office, she's proven herself to be a devoted advocate for children and families. Newly elected, she participated in our Freshman Academy and took a deep dive into learning about the child welfare system and the importance of primary prevention. And as she stated just last week, she spent time with the Associate Commissioner, Dr. Jerry Milner, to gain further insights on the child welfare and the importance of primary prevention. To our Senate and House legislators, thank you, Katrina Sheely and Beth Bernstein. Both of you have distinguished yourselves repeatedly as strong, successful, and tenacious advocates and leaders for children and families in our state. In fact, many of the substantive legislative reforms and improvements dealing with child safety and welfare in recent years have come from one or both of these two lawmakers. And last, I'd like to recognize our donors and our board members, some of who are here today, that without their support would make a, this a very difficult effort. Today recognizes April as Child Abuse Prevention Month, the time when we focus on the many things that we can do to support healthy children and stronger families. Because that when we know that when we work together and do what is good for kids and their families, South Carolina is stronger today and into the future. As many of you know, Children's Trust was established in 1984 by the South Carolina State Legislature. Our purpose was and remains to fund innovative community programs that work to prevent child abuse and neglect and to meet the critical needs of children in South Carolina. Last year, we served more than 8,000 parents, caregivers, and children through partnerships with 48 local organizations across our state. Over the past 35 years, we've learned a lot about prevention and childhood trauma. We've learned that damages from abuse are countless, not only for the child, but for our state workforce. We also now know that adverse childhood experiences such as physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, living in poverty or violence in the home, living with a substance abuser, living with a mentally ill person, or living with someone who ha is or has been incarcerated create toxic stress that can impede normal growth and development. Children who experience this trauma are far more likely to become adults with problems like depression, alcoholism, obesity, heart and liver disease, and decreased workplace performance, all of which take a heavy toll on South Carolina's future. This is why Children's Trust works upstream before the crisis of abuse and neglect ever happens. We focus on two generation strategies, working with children and their families to break that generational cycle of abuse and neglect and bring about lasting change for those children and their children. We believe prevention is the most cost-effective and efficient way to address abuse, and it is the best investment we can make in our future. Our work, in a nutshell, is reducing abuse and neglect by helping parents to parent better. In evidence-based prevention programs throughout the state, like home visiting, we help new mothers be their child's first teacher, especially in those critical first 1,000 days. Through an incredible public-private partnership with the Department of Social Service and the Duke Endowment, we bring the Strengthening Families program to 26 counties. And additionally, we are piloting a public health approach to prevention, bringing the Positive Parenting program to Greenville and Georgetown counties. However, with more than 20,000 children in confirmed cases of abuse and neglect last year, the same number of children it would take to fill 35 elementary schools, we recognize that there is more work to do. So in our new initiative, Children's Trust has been piloting parent advisory councils to build better communications between parents and the prevention organizations that serve them. Today, I have the privilege of introducing Mrs. DeCorey Jones, a parent leader on the state's first parent advisory council serving the Midlands. As a mother to six children, all of whom are here today to support her, she knows how critical parent input is to building effective systems and program. Please join me in welcoming Mrs. Ms. Jones. Good morning. Um, one of my children is not here, and, and that is my oldest child. 
um, she she's working on some things right now and um, thank you very much sir. this is the day that the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad in it okay I don't know who made the day I know I didn't I know you didn't but still I rejoice and I'm glad nations and faraway places acknowledge the maker of the day in a different way but so do neighbors across the street right now if we take a moment to look around we are going to first notice more differences think about our similarities though a simple basic similarity is that we are all born babies we had to grow as we grew we had to be supported we had to learn sharing sharing helped us understand these skills gave us the opportunity to build resilience all of us here today has put put some persistence into existence another similarity someone helped us along the way as we think about being infants we must think about parents that's someone who helped us along the way let's think about grandparents and extended families and chosen kin in traditional roles as well as in parental roles adoptive and foster parents and congregate care providers all have chosen to have parental obligations society as a whole shapes our youth that is a known fact as members of society are we all aware of the depth of this responsibility everything we do and say determines our future the youth are watching they are listening they are waiting I'm a middle-aged woman now but I remember how I watched and listened and waited I watched things happen to my body I listened to commentary that degraded my self-worth I waited for things to change this is where I want to insert a very important word prevention now waiting I got distracted by unhealthy relationships waiting I continued having children I was a single parent and financially ill-equipped, so I invested myself in situations that did not benefit me. These situations, therefore, did not benefit my children, my children who were watching and listening and waiting. I was in a place from which I needed to grow. I was deep in the dirt, but it's okay because I was a seed. I found ways to stay encouraged Physical activities lifted my mood. Service gave me a reason to leave, live, to leave where we lived and interact with positive people. I found children's trust and the protective factors. I learned about adverse childhood experiences and the data obtained from the original studies. My life's experience made more sense. I accepted myself and I found I could better accept and understand others. I found that in acceptance of myself, without definition or confrontation, I could listen to others. I could lift understanding. Others for me are people like most of you. Maybe your childhood experience was mom and dad and relatives and mostly happy memories, nothing traumatic. I accept your life experience was your life's experience. I know that my experience does not invalidate your experience. It is a life's experience. You have life, I have life, we have experiences. I can listen and find value in your perspective. I can lift understanding. And I hope with my whole heart that our whole society is either doing or learning acceptance, listening, and lifting. Our youth are watching and listening and waiting. What are we doing? Now, as a parent, there's a lot of times I don't know what I'm doing. Some days that statement applies to just about every moment I spend parenting. You need two tests, a permit, and a license to drive, but when you get the paperwork on a baby, you've already been making some high-level parental decisions. From nutrition to proper development to special needs to the importance of self-care, all parents need certain factors to protect their children in order to provide a safe and happy now and ever after, aka the future. 
access to concrete supports, can prevent missed appointments, decrease crime. Positive supports identified by prevention services could reduce the potential for depression and make early intervention and maltreatment easier. You can't do better until you know better. Prevention helps you know better and gives you the opportunity to do better. Understanding of children's development and understanding how trauma affects self, family, community, and society, it's like winning the lifetime lottery, the lottery of life, the acceptance of the present. Prevention affirms resilience. It helps identify lasting, self-sustaining best practices, like, like self-care, which is critical. Parenting. If you can breathe, you can parent. Take a breath. It's OK. Nobody knows how to parent your child in this very minute, but you are the expert. You stepped up. Whether it was for a helpless yet demanding infant, or for some, a toddler who was the only survivor, or a 15-year-old who considers not surviving as a way to cope. Don't you want all the factors available to you to protect your child, to protect our future? Hold out your hand, accept your experience, listen to the experience of others, and lift understanding. We are truly all in this together. Each of us has access to space, the space right here between our ears. Let's make sure we keep some love in there because there is no safer or nicer or better place to be than with love. I have three asks of you today. Donate your money, your time, your resources, whatever you can. Congratulate. Every kind word is a balm to the spirit advocate and my advocacy line is everybody has something to say that's all i have to say thank you well thank you everybody for coming this is a special day of special proclamation special thoughts and special people and with that ms mcmaster has invited us to come into the house for refreshments so everyone's invited and we are adjourned. <laughs>